The Civil War Uncovered is brought to you by MindLab Americas. Hello, I'm Robin Smith, and welcome to another episode of The Civil War Uncovered. In the summer of 1862, Union forces in Virginia were on the retreat. In late June, George McClellan had been defeated by Robert E. Lee in the Seven Days Battles. In early August, Stonewall Jackson had won the Battle of Cedar Mountain. Robert E. Lee was now moving his forces north with a plan to trap Union General John Pope's army between the Rapidan and Rappahannock rivers. As Confederate forces enjoyed great success, Southern stars were emerging, most notably flamboyant cavalry commander Jeb Stuart. In mid-August 1862, Stuart's forces were camped at a crossroads on the Orange Plank Road near the Wilderness. Just over the hill from his main body of cavalry, Jeb and his staff were sleeping on a porch of a private home. Among those with him were Harrows von Bork and John Singleton Mosby. Jeb was waiting for other Confederate cavalry to rendezvous with him, so he sent Mosby to look for them in the dark. As soon as Mosby rode out of the yard, he was surprised by a stray squad of Union cavalry who fired on him. This alerted the Confederates, who took horse and scattered. The Union cavalry searched the porch of the house where the Confederates had been sleeping and had hastily abandoned their gear. In Stuart's dispatch pouch, the Union troopers found Robert E. Lee's battle plan to trap General Pope. They also captured Jeb Stewart's personal effects, including his rakish hat. This was a personal embarrassment to Jeb Stewart and spurred him on to raid the Union Supply Depot at Warrenton, where Stewart captured the Union Army payroll and General John Pope's personal baggage, including General Pope's coat. Stewart sent the coat to Richmond as a trophy for the public to see. Let's join our team in the field as they explore the site where Jeb Stewart lost his hat. In the official records, Jeb Stewart mentions in a uh, letter to one of his officers to meet him at the old camp near the big turn in the railroad grade. Well, that turn is behind us, and uh, relic hunters over the years have found a lot of cavalry-related items in, this, in these fields around us. So uh, this is uh, Jeb Stewart's camp. It's something, it may be something small, probably is. Ha ha, <laughs> piece of lead. Small piece of lead. Sounded small and shallow, and it was small and shallow. There's something Civil War. Knapsack J hook. It's one of the light, light top ones. The, some of them have a real heavy brass circle thing up here at the top. And this is one of the thin ones. Find those more in Confederate camps, actually, the thin ones. Jeb Stewart's Confederate cavalry.
definitely iron, but it's uh, it's kind of shaped a little bit like a, a piece of a plate. There's a lot of rust on the back side of it. So I'm not going to clean it up anymore here because I don't want to damage it. Just in case it's something really neat. Don't know. Well, it's a big piece of iron or something. Well, yeah, it was a horse buckle. Part of one, anyway. I got one like that. I want a bullet. <laughs> I want a carbine bullet. That's what the uh, Federal Cavalry carried was carbines. Oh, wow. That's definitely it. Big piece of iron. Of course, they probably had 100 pounds of iron on them horses between the saddles and the <laughs> stirrups and all the riggings. They were pulling carts and wagons. There's that turkey sound. Well, now, turkey sound paid off this time. It's the base of a Spencer uh, cartridge from the Civil War. A wood shot. It's old, it's got a lot of patina on it. Maybe part of a bucking ball. Southern cavalry troops carried a variety of weapons. Steve Davis shows us an option many Confederates used, especially early in the war. The beginning of the Civil War, many of the soldiers who came to volunteer brought their own weapons with them. Uh, in some cases, there weren't enough weapons to go around, and so they were, were requested to bring weapons. Uh, some states actually paid a bounty to a soldier that brought his own weapon along with him. Many of the cavalrymen carried shotguns because it gave them two shots for each reloading. This one was made by T.W. Tigner in Richmond at the time of the Civil War or before. Uh, as you can see, it has a repair to the stock, which may be wartime repair, may be post-war, we don't know. It uses the back lock style of lock, which means that the springs go down behind the hammer, as opposed to the modern, mu or, the, or the, the newer style musket lock that was a forward lock, where the springs were in front of the, ha the hammer. It is a standard percussion variety, cap lock, you would load first your powder, then your, then a wad, then your shot charge, 
and then another wad on top of that to hold it in. Then of course you'd put, you would put the percussion cap on the nipple cone and then it was ready to fire. This one is not in firing condition unfortunately but it serves as a good example. After a time many of the cavalrymen would shorten their barrels right about here right in front of the forward loop which made it much easier and convenient to handle in the short length and in some cases caused the shot to scatter more which gave them a greater chance of hitting what they were aiming at from a moving horse. This is approximately 12 gauge has the patch box in the stock where they would keep oiled patches if you were a Confederate mounted on horseback, this weapon would give you a greater chance of hitting your target, and if you hit it, it would be devastating. Our own David Shackleton shares a tip that just might help you when you're digging out in the field. The hobby of metal detecting uh, involves digging holes, obviously. And when you dig a hole, you want to make a precision cut into the ground and disturb as, as little of the ground as possible. Also have to keep in mind your landowner, um, the privilege that you have from the landowner to be on the property. And also if you have cattle and livestock grazing in the fields, you can't be leaving uh, holes where they'll break, uh, break limbs on the holes. So what we've got here is an example of a, what we call a plug. And you can use a towel or an old t-shirt. A lot of guys like to use them, especially if they're chasing the smaller artifacts like bullets or buttons. You can just lay it down and you take the plug out, which is the topsoil and the, the grass, and you can place it right on top. And then you use your metal detector to find the relic. Anything else, any other dirt that you recover out of the hole, you can place on the towel or on the t-shirt. Going back in is just as important as coming out. Once you've found your, your artifact, you try to get the dirt back into the hole as best as you can and then get that plug back on top the way it came out like a puzzle piece and then pat it down recompact it down into the ground like that come on now relic bob deserves a good target <laughs> what clint east would say in the unforgiven deserve ain't got nothing to do with it <laughs> Can you tell I dig careful when I think it's something better than the other signals? <laughs> Ooh, I think it's out of the ground. I lean towards a bullet. Ah, Bob guessed right. Yay! That there is a Confederate two ring gardener. And it doesn't look like it's been fired. It looks like it's been dropped. Cool. Well, Frank dug right there, but he missed this one. <laughs> That's easy to do. This is a lot of territory to get your coil over every little bit of it. Nothing against the guy that was here before us, but It's hard, it's easy to miss stuff. And that's good because it shares, everybody gets a shot at it and shares the relics a little bit. I lean towards another bullet. Does anybody see a bullet? Another, another Richmond two ring gardener. See them pesky relics, they can hide real good. That one crawled right under that piece of stalk so you couldn't see it. That's a pretty, that's a nice dropped one. That's maybe a, 
that's a smaller one I think this is a 54 caliber and that was down there about eight or ten inches I'd say at the plow line we're gonna look at that one <clears throat> now I know there's something good there because it's hiding under a rock <laughs> That's going to be that pistol bullet that that guy shot at. Aha! Not a pistol bullet, it's another two ringer. Fresh from the ground. I'd like to have about 25 of these when David walks over and just pour them out of his feet. I noticed he hasn't wanted to bet about things here lately. <laughs> <laughs> Jeb Stewart's camp, what a place. Hey, you sent me over the hill? Uh-huh. That's what you always do. Wait a minute, I'll now wait a minute. Here. I think we have a record of this Pretty one. Sure. See, what I think I'll go up on top of the hill. I said, hey, go ahead, go where you want, David. <laughs> what a super day. That's all for this episode of The Civil War Uncovered. But don't forget, we have lots of ways for you to see our show and get extra content. Visit us online at thecivilwaruncovered.com or like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can watch our American Iron TV channel on Roku through Blip TV. And you can see our videos and many more relic hunting features and videos on mindlab.com.